Give me the book of Amos, Amos chapter 3. Amos 3 verse 7. Give me Amos chapter 3. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So it says, the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. He revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Is that? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. Come on. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed but those belong things, unto us. But those things which are what? But those things which are revealed. But those things which are revealed. Come on belong unto us and to our children forever. Come on. That we may know that we may do all the words of this law. You see that thing? It says, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and our children forever. So the Lord will reveal his secrets unto the prophets and the prophets will teach the people, including the children. You understand? Go back to Amos 3 verse 7. Amos chapter 3 verse 7. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Come on. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So the Lord revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. And the way he speaks to the prophets, give me the book of Hosea 12, now, verse 10. Hosea 12, verse 10. Hosea, chapter 12, verse 10. The Lord revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. And the way the Lord spoke to the prophets from the beginning of time unto this day, okay, is through similitudes, parables, dark sayings, and proverbs. You understand? And vision. Give me that in Hosea 12 and verse 10. The book of Hosea at the top verse 10. Read. I have also spoken by the prophets. Mm -hmm. And I have multiplied visions and use the similitudes by the ministry of the, of the prophets. You see that thing? I have also spoken by the prophets. You remember he said, he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. I have also spoken by the prophets, I have, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Give me the book of Numbers 12, verse 6. Numbers, chapter 12 and verse 6. The book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 6. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. You see that thing? He says, I, the Lord, I, 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 the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. I will make, the Lord says, he will make himself known unto that prophet in a vision and he will speak unto him in a dream. You understand? So the Lord will speak to he speak he speak to the prophets in in various forms. He use visions and dreams, he use similitudes and parables, and and proverbs and dark things. You understand? Go back to Isaiah twelve, verse ten. The book of Isaiah, chapter twelve, verse ten. Read. I have also spoken by the prophets. And I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Come on. Read that again. I'm Is sorry. there iniquity? I'm sorry. Read that then again. The book, the book of Hosea, chapter 12, verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used the similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So now the visions and similitudes, that's how the Lord speaks to the prophets. The similitude is an illustrated story. It's a parable. Give me that in Psalm 78, verse 1. Psalms, chapter 78, verse 1.
the book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. He says, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Meaning the thing that you must pay attention to and listen to is the word of the Lord's mouth. This Bible. Give me that in Ecclesiastes chapter 16, verse 24. Sirach, chapter 16, verse 24. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Meaning what? You must pay attention to what this Bible says. Open your ears to this Bible. Okay, Sirach 16, verse 24, read there. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 16, verses 24. Read. My son, hearken unto me, and learn knowledge, and mark my words with thy heart. You see what he's saying? It says, mark my words with thy heart. Mark my words with your mind. Which words? The words of this law. You understand? The words of this law. Verse 24 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 16, verse 24. My son, hearken unto me and learn knowledge and mark my words with thy heart. You see that thing? Mark my words, my words, the words of this law, the words of this Bible. That's what you're supposed to listen to. That's what you're supposed to put in your mind. Okay? Go back to Psalm 78, verse 1 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verses 1. Read. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Read on. I will open my mouth in a parable. Mm -hmm. I will utter dark sayings of old. Read that again, verse 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 2. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. So the Lord says he will open his mouth in a parable. He will utter dark sayings of old. Because the way the Bible is written, there are things that are written plainly. There are those that are written in deep, dark mysteries. You understand? So now watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 18, verse 24. He says, I will open my mouth in a parable. A parable is an illustrated story. Okay? A parable. Matthew 13, verse 34. Matthew chapter 13, verse 34. The book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 34. Come on. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. Come on. And without a parable spake he not unto them. He says, without parable spake he not unto them. Read on. Watch this. Verse 35. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying. Which was, which was what? Which was spoken by the prophet saying. Which, which was spoken by the prophet. So he's going to quote David. He's going to quote King David in Psalm 78, what we just read. Read verse 35 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 35. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying, Read. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter that, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Read. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him saying, declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. So Christ was expounding unto them the parables regarding the tares. If you read up from verse 24 down, okay? So, but what we are reading here is that Christ spoke in parables that the scriptures might be fulfilled. What we read in Psalm 78, what we read in Hosea 12, what we read in um, Numbers 12, verse 6, and so forth. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of John 16, 25. John chapter 16, verse 25. The book of John chapter 16, verses 25. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. In what? In Proverbs. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. Proverbs means what? Parables, illustrated stories, similitude. Read on. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly 
of the Father. You see that thing? But I shall show you plainly of the Father. When the Lord returns, you will teach us again. You understand? You will teach us again. He's, he's going to expound and speak unto us plainly and make these things plain. You understand? Give me Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Start at verse 10. Matthew 13 verse 10. The book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Why do you speak unto them in proverbs, in dark things, in simply truths? They don't. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. The mysteries of the kingdom of heaven is given to those that humble down to what is written in this Bible. You understand? If you humble down to what this Bible says, you will receive the parables of knowledge. Give me that in Sarah chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 25. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verses 25. Mm -hmm. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom, but godliness is in an abomination to a sinner. Okay, read that again, verse 25. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 25. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom, but godliness in an abomination to a sinner. But godliness is an abomination to a sinner. It says the parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. So the parables of knowledge is what? Is he that say? That, those are the parables of knowledge. Okay? It says the parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. Because wisdom is a treasure. Like the class we went over a couple of days back, you're going to find, if you, seek, if you seek after the wisdom of the Lord, the laws of God like unto treasure, you're going to understand the parables of knowledge. You understand? And when the when the prophets bring them out, you will be able to understand them as well. Jump up to verse 23. Verse 23. Sirach 1, 23. A patient man will bear for a time. And afterward, joy shall spring up unto him. Because in this world, you need to be patient. Don't try to ask for wisdom and knowledge that you will not be able to receive or your spirit will not be able to handle. You understand? Verse 23 again. The book of Ecclesiastes is chapter 1 verse 23. A patient man will bear for a time and afterward joy shall spring up unto him. So now remember it says a patient man will bear for a time. Watch this. For the time until the Lord will reveal understanding unto him. For the, the time until the parables of knowledge will be declared unto him. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach, chapter 20, verse 32. We come back here. Ecclesiastes, chapter 20, verse 32. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20, verses 32. Necessary patience in seeking the Lord is better than he that leadeth his life without a guide. You see that thing? Necessary patience in seeking the Lord. You need to be patient. And patience is necessary in seeking the Lord. You're not going to seek the Lord without being patient. You need to be patient and wait, study, to be quiet, gather understanding, follow instruction and counsel. Then the Lord will declare the parables of knowledge unto you. Go back to Sarah 123. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 23. Mm -hmm. A patient man will bear for a time, and afterward joy shall spring up unto him. Because this man, he understands that patience is necessary in seeking the Lord. You understand? It's necessary. So it says, and afterward joy shall spring up unto him. The joy of the Lord will be his strength. Read on, verse 24. He will hide his words for a time, and the lips of many shall declare his wisdom. You see that thing? He will hide his words for a time, and the lips of many shall declare his wisdom. You understand? For instance, if you look at us, we've been in the shadows for a while. I'm talking about us as a camp. Now, the stuff is starting to go out now. Okay, the laws of God, the most high God is allowing us to put our stuff out there. And guess what? Slowly we're gonna start to see people are starting to notice what's going on. You understand? Read that again, verse 24. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 24. Oui. He will hide his words for a time, and the lips of many shall declare his wisdom. You see that thing right there? Because only a patient man will be able to understand this thing. He understands that it's a process to learn this book. All right? Read verse 26 now. Come on. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments. That's the secret sauce right there. If you desire wisdom, keep the laws of God. Keep the commandments. Apply. Read. And the Lord shall give her unto thee. And the Lord will give her unto you, will give wisdom unto you. Read on. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom. For the what? And in, for the fear of the Lord is wisdom. The, for the fear of the Lord is wisdom. So the first thing you must do first, you must fear the most high God. Give me that in Psalms 119 verse 120. Psalms 119 verse 120. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verses 120. Mm -hmm. my, flesh, my flesh trembleth for fear of thee. I am afraid of thy judgment. You see that thing? I am afraid of thy judgment. So the thing that you must be afraid of, you must be afraid of God's judgment. All right? That is the first thing that must come upon us. The first thing that the Lord requires of us is fear. It's not love. It's fear. Give me that in... Uh, Give me that in Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. Mm -hmm. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. To do what? To fear the Lord thy God. That's the first thing that the Lord requires of us. To fear him. Not to love him. No. To fear him. To fear him. To be afraid of his judgments, like David said. That's how we're going to get the wisdom that the Lord wants to give unto us. Okay? Read that again, verse 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. Mm -hmm. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy, thy God require of thee? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God, Read. to walk in all his ways, and to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. You see that thing? So now is the first thing you must fear the most like God. Then the second thing is you must walk in all the ways of the most like God. Then the third thing says, and you must love him. So notice where the love part is. It's on the third, it's first on the list. Okay. The first thing is fear. The second thing is walk in all his ways and love him. Then serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That is what the Lord requires of us. Go back to Zerat now, chapter 1, verse 27. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verses 27. Come on. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction, and faith and meekness are his delight. You see that thing? He's letting you know what, is, what the Most High is delighted in. The Lord is delighted in faith, meekness. You understand? Fear, instruction, Faith and meekness. This is what the most that this is what delights the most like God. Fear, that's the first thing we can get that wisdom. That fear in itself is wisdom. You fear the fearing the most like God, that's wisdom right there. Just that fear alone is wisdom. Because you understand if I do this, the Lord will judge me. Okay? So now it says fear, wisdom, instruction, faith, and meekness. This is what the Lord delights in. Okay? So we need to understand that thing. Read that again, verse 27. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 27. For fear of the Lord is wisdom mm -hmm. and instruction, and faith and meekness are his delight. Okay, now jump up to verse 16. Now. Start, start at verse, yeah, read verse 16. 1 6. The, one book, six. the book of Ecclesiastes is. Chapter 1, verses 16. Mm -hmm. To fear the Lord is fullness of wisdom and filleth men with the fruits. You see that thing? The fruit is what we read in Galatians 5, 22. Read that again, verse 16. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 16. To fear the Lord is fullness of wisdom and filleth men with the fruits. So now, to fear the Lord is, the, is fullness of wisdom. When you fear the most high God, that's the fullness of wisdom. Because you understand the cause and effect, okay? 
and he says, and filleth men with her fruit. Because the more you apply, the more you move in the spirit of meekness and fear, you understand, and humility to what the Lord commanded us to do, guess what? The Lord will fill you with the fruit of his wisdom. You understand? Come on. Verse 17. She filleth all the house with things desirable, and the garners with her increase. You see that? She filleth all their house with things desirable. Because what is the, what are those things that are going to be desirable? What is that? Honor, integrity, understanding, knowledge of the scriptures. You understand? Being able to raise men and women in this truth to be able to apply God's commandment. Teaching marriage, teaching family, how to raise up your children, how to be a wife, how to be a woman. You understand? How to be a sister in the truth, how to be a husband, how to be a father, how to be a brother, how to be a leader in the nation of Israel. You understand? Those are desirable things. You understand? Because it guess what? That is the requirement for us to get the kingdom, to gather ourselves together, to gather people together in the spirit of Christ. One mind, one spirit, one judgment. You understand? Read that again, verse 17. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 17. She filleth all their house with things desirable, and the corners with the increase. Come on. The fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom, mm. making peace and perfect health to flourish. Three. Both which are the gift of God, and it enlargeth their rejoicing that love him. You see that thing? The fear of the Lord is a crown of wisdom. When you fear the most high God, you're going to get a crown of wisdom. Making peace and perfect health to flourish. Because when you have that crown of wisdom, when you have that fear of the Lord, the most I will bestow a crown of wisdom upon you. You're going to make peace and perfect health to flourish among brothers and sisters. You understand? Both which are the gifts of God. So, peace, perfect health, you understand? That is the gift of the Lord right there. And joy, that's the gift of the most I God. So, in order for the Most High God to be able to bless us with the fruit of His wisdom, we need to fear Him. Guess what? We also, when we do that, the Lord will uh, will open His parables, His understanding unto us, His mysteries unto us, so we may be able to declare them to them to our children. Give me that in Psalm seventy-eight, verse five. Actually, give me Psalm seventy-eight, verse three. Psalm seventy-eight, verse three. Read that very quick. The book of Psalms, 78, verse 3. Which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. And our fathers have told us. Read on. And will not hide them from the children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he had done. Come on. For he established a testimony in Jacob mm -hmm. and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. You see that thing? Our job is to command the laws of God to our children. But in order for the Most High to bestow that wisdom and understanding unto us, we need to fear him so the Lord can pour out his wisdom, his infinite wisdom in our spirit so we can declare that wisdom to our children. And they will declare them to their children after them. Generational wealth of knowledge and understanding. That's how we're going to be able to be exalted above all nations on earth. We need to do those things first. Keeping of the commandments, the fear of the most high God, so the Lord can ex that so the Lord can exalt us from our low estate. You understand? Okay. Now let's get into the book of Genesis now. I went all of that so that we can build up a case to understand that the most high God, He will expound unto us with his, his parables, his mysteries unto us, only when we only if we are faithful to his word, we fear him. We move in the spirit of meekness. 